Inflation isn't just affecting traditional lifestyles, it's impacting world travelling nomads like us. And our strap line is living an intentional life. So it seems only right that we should investigate some of the lower cost options for living here in the UK. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Let's freeze the video right there. Okay. Haven't we already booked our flight and we're restarting our travels again soon? Um, yeah, that's a good point. And maybe what we yeah. should do is provide <laughs> a little bit of context for our lovely viewers on why we're making this short series of videos that could unlock the dream of world travel mm -hmm. for some of you. And that's the reason why we're doing it. And as Sarah said at the start of this video, Whatever you're doing in life, we're all being impacted by inflation at the moment. We're back here in the UK, we're going to shops yeah. and we just can't believe what's <laughs> happened to the prices. But that's the same if you're nomadic too, it doesn't change. And wherever you are in the world, you're having the impact of inflation yeah. affecting you. So what we're doing is we're looking at low cost of living, alternative lifestyle options here in the UK with the potential of that insulating us to an extent from the inflationary effects of travel. And also there are a number of intangible benefits that I want to get into too. Do you mean by owning we will have a way to manage our annual costs? Yeah, absolutely. And not only that, there are parallels in what we're talking about in this series with other nations of the world. We're talking about specifics in the UK, but wherever you are, you can overlay this and think about doing the same in your country. If you're overseas and you want to spend more time in the UK, these options we're talking about you can do. So if you want to spend longer in the UK and have a deeper experience of the UK life, then doing this could actually be worthwhile to you too. Okay, let's get back to the video. I think that's a damn good idea. <laughs> and so we've come to Venetian Marina here in Cheshire. Marina, you might say. What are you doing in a marina? Well, in this first in the series, we're looking at could we hunker down to avoid inflation by living on a boat for up to three months of the year? possible? Well come with us, we're going to show you round one and we'll tell you whether we think this could work for us. So let's have a look at one of these boats. This is it, this is a narrow boat. This is a 60 foot and it's known as a semi-traditional. Semi-traditional comes from the fact of when you look in this bit here which I think is called the stern but I don't know and you can see there's a couple of steps but also there's seats and I can imagine Sarah and I having a little table between us and having a gin and tonic or a glass of wine. All of this peels back and there'd be ducks and swans going by. So that's pretty idyllic. This is, as I say, a narrow boat. Guess its name from the fact that it is particularly narrow. So if we go all the way down, 60 foot is pretty long. The good thing about this type of boat, rather than another style which is known as a wide beam, is it can basically go the entire network of canals and rivers around the UK, which is pretty cool, isn't it? So you can go from here, which is up in the north, all the way down to London. And to go from here to London, if you were going at a cracking pace, would take about two weeks. Imagine that as a little vacation trip. So you want to take a look inside? So that's the front door. It helps when you get onto these things if you're quite small. Oh, I had a little look around initially and bagged my head. But those windows open there, all of this pulls back and this would be your, your outside space, I guess. And these little doors, which I would say that's about four foot tall. So I'm going to crouch down and come on in. A little fireplace there, which I'm sure keeps the place nice and toasty in the winter. Storage space. Somewhere for you to hang your keys. Not sure those keys are going to open much though. Curtains, something I have learned looking online. It's a nice thing about these curtains is you have this rod across the bottom. So when you pull them, the curtains don't fall down inside. They're held up. And a couple of seats here. Now I think Sarah and I, if we owned a boat like this, we'd go for something more like a sofa than this. Oh, it looks a little bit clinical when you see something like that. TV there with a whole range of DVDs and books. I think what they, they refer to this area here as a YouTube studio area. I'm sure all boats have a YouTube studio area. It means you can put your camera down there and you can sit and talk on YouTube. I guess another idea, you could use it for eating maybe or working. Then we come through to the kitchen. There we go, full oven and grill with a gas hob on top. 
over here you've got a sink and drainer and you've got a fridge not huge but it's got a little freezer compartment on the top and if one of you is cooking which is normally me if i'm honest and the other one's outside working on the boat you can do this and go do you fancy a beer or something and probably knowing sarah she'd say i'll have a beer but have you got any wine so you've got all of these various units around as well there's one two three four base units you've got drawers and even some place for spatulas and stuff and then a shower look at that that's a full height shower let me just see if i can get in there yeah loads of room for me in here sink area with storage underneath toilet i don't know the exact system for this toilet i don't really like to ask but there's things on the wall there that probably do something that I don't really want to know about unless I'm actually buying the boat. So we continue through. And in the bedroom area, obviously, there's a bed. We've both had a look at that and you're wondering how big that is, I'm sure. I'd say that's probably four foot six wide. Me and Sarah could clamber on there. Somewhere for me to do my makeup just here with PowerPoints and again, storage down the bottom storage up high all the way around the bed one thing i'd say about this is it is a narrow boat so here we are in our new youtube studio it's good it's yeah, nice i thought you were gonna say a new nice. home before i had anything to easy do with tiger, that easy tiger so this boat is called tajol i don't know why but we will probably rename it if we bought it to yeah. two go rome and yes. put lovely sign writing yeah. on the side it's eighty thousand pounds for birth so i guess the YouTube studio can convert into yeah, a bed, bed as yeah. well, I would imagine. I can see how that would work, actually. You drop this table down. Mm -hmm. So there's something you have to do on these boats, which is called blacking. And that's basically the bottom side of the boat needs to get effectively it's a bitumen, a bitumen isn't bitumen, it? Bitumen, yeah. And the boat was built in 2007 by G and J Reeves, 60 foot long. So, hmm. Sarah. It's long. Could you and imagine? Could you live on here? I... Yes, I could live in here. When I first walked in, I thought, no, far too narrow, but it is cosy. I can understand why people like yeah. it. I think it takes a lot of getting used to being narrow because you can't pass each other easily. I'd have to wear a hard hat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You already banged your head. We probably want to do some modernisations. A lot of yeah. like, wood. And yeah. I guess that's, that's, that's the attractive. Thing, isn't it? Yeah. But there are things you could do to make it more modern. So... I'm warming to the idea to more it. than I thought I would do. Yeah. And remember what we're talking about. We're thinking yeah. about, for us, that this could be something that we could own in the UK. It gives us a home address mm -hmm. as such. And we'd be in here for maybe three months of the year, yeah. in the warmest time of the year. And you could travel around the boatways of the UK. So what... It looks like there's a nice community. Yeah. Yeah, so they've got about there's all, 15... There's people working on their boats, and they've got this particular marina. There's 105, I think he said, boats here. But residential, which is what we'd be looking for, 20, would be, it? yeah, 15 to 20 boats. So it's clearly a nice community, the people out working on them, and yeah. it's, it's nice feel. If you're not from the UK, and you want to spend some extended time in the UK, would you consider buying something like this and storing it? We're well, probably interested in the costs. We've told you the headline cost of 80000 for this boat. How much is yeah. the rent for where you leave it? The mooring fee, I guess that is. Yeah. And electric and all that kind of stuff. Let's head back, get a nice drink in our hands, mm -hmm. and tell you exactly what those costs are. And then we're interested to know from you, is this something you would consider as a hedge against what's going on in the world so that you could rather than being place. in airbnbs 12 months of the year yeah. you could come here and another thing if sarah and i were to buy a boat like this and you were traveling the world and you were coming to the uk would you want to stay in it is this a place that we'd say we'll be in it for three months a year and then two go rome viewers will be in it the rest of the year yeah interesting mm. thought so we've had a look around and we've seen something we like and let's say we want to buy it. That was 79,950. What's the process? So the buying process is similar, but more simpler than buying a house. You find the boat you like and you put in your offer. That will be subject to survey. 
If the offer gets accepted, you will then pay a deposit of generally around £1,000 and the boat will be taken off the market. Survey happens and whether or not there's any more work that needs doing, you then re can renegotiate. Once that goes through, you pay your money and basically that's it, the keys, keys are yours. The boatyard will do any remedial work if needed and you're off, off on your boat. Yeah, so the next thing is getting into the costs of actually owning a boat. So the first thing are the mooring fees. So where we are now at Venetia Marina, the mooring fees are £3,588 a year, which sounds... I don't know if that's a lot or not, but it does include parking. So if you're going to use this as a residential marina for you, you can have a car, park your car here all year round. They've got washing machine and dryers, yeah. toilets, shower blocks. They've got all kinds of things on site. We're sat in front of a tea rooms here and, and there's, there's a little shop. shops yeah. and, and all kinds <laughs> of stuff. So all of that is included in your mooring fee, but that's not everything. There's more to pay on top of that. Every three or four years having to do blacking and this yes. is something Sarah spoke about when we were on the boat a little while ago and we were told a short moment ago that that costs about a thousand pound each time so if we say every three years and that's 333 pounds per year and then you'll want to get your boat serviced won't you well servicing we were told that's about 300 pounds a year as well and that's for your engine yeah, yeah, exactly. And then there's things like your fuel for going up and down the river and also the fuel for your heater on the boat. Well, that's all done via diesel. So the cost of that comes down to what the prevailing cost is of diesel at that time and what your usage level is. The last cost is your license for access to the waterways, which is around a thousand pounds per year. So all these things add up. Mm. So let's see what it all equates to. And then let's put some some semblance of reality around yeah. that for people who are nomadic traveling considering this as an option mm -hmm. so that comes to five thousand two hundred and twenty one pounds a year so if you're planning to spend three months a year on your boat that comes to seventeen hundred and forty quid which uh, a month which I don't know, it's not cheap. No, but it seems expensive. Yeah, if you were to then step it up and you thought well actually I could be on this boat for six months a year. So if you're not from the UK, mm -hmm. and let's say you can get a, a three-month visa in the UK, we could come here for three months, go to Europe for three months, come back here for three months. Go, you could do some bouncing around like that. So you use it for six months of a year in total. Well, then on the, on the months that you're on the boat, that only equates to a cost of £870 a month. Now this is starting to look reasonably interesting. Yeah. So is this something you consider? We'll only answer that once we've discussed some of the more tangible and intangible benefits of having a boat such as this. If you stay on a residential mooring, that will actually give you a UK residential postal address, which obviously comes with many benefits. And this particular marina will take your posting for you and store it for you if you're not here. That's a real tangible benefit. Now, if we go into more intangibles, you've got the beauty of the British waterways. Now, if you're not from the UK, you won't know about this system. <laughs> Even if you've holidayed here before, you won't know the extensive nature and how people live. People live all over the UK on these narrow boats. And we were talking a moment ago about the costs of being in a residential mooring. But if you decided, well, actually, no, I'm going to go up and down the mm. canals. You can park your narrow boat, I assume that's what we call it, or moor it, that's moor it, it, moor, moor it, it. <laughs> your narrow boat on the side of the canal, just hammer it into the side there, and it won't cost you anything. There's no mooring fee for doing that. And we, where we used to live, we used to take walks down the canal all the time, and you'd see yeah. people parked up there, and what they'd do is they'd moor up, and then stroll into the local town and do their shopping at the supermarket, get all the produce they need, come back to their boat, cook it all up, lovely way yeah. of life. Or alternatively, dotted all along the waterways of the UK, this won't surprise you, <laughs> are pubs. Pubs everywhere. So people will pull up outside a pub, moor their boat, stroll inside for bangers and mash yes. and a Lovely pint yeah. of bitter, something <laughs> like that. Can't be bad, can it? Next, let me paint this picture for you. Imagine being on the boat on these beautiful canals behind me, the sun shining down and everywhere you look is lovely nature. You look to your left and there's some ducks with the little ducklings going along the river. Nice. And look to the right, you've got some swans probably hissing because they're on the nest 
and birds just swooping all over the place. Just beautiful nature and English countryside. Just sounds idyllic. <laughs> and then the next thing is the whole community element. As I said, we used to walk down the side of canals where we used to live. Everybody on a boat wants to talk to you. Mm. So it's a real community spirit. We've seen it here yeah. at this mooring where they're helping each other out on their boats as well. So if you're seeking community in life, then living on a narrow boat on the waterways of the UK can't be a bad idea, mm. really. Pulling over wherever you wish. And because you've got your kitchen with you, you can make your sandwich, put a picnic together and hop into the local field, put your picnic blanket down and enjoy the beautiful scenery probably enjoy a bottle of wine yes. that you bought in the local supermarket mm. as well this is all and sounding very very mm. interesting but let's come back to our reason for why we're thinking of doing something like this well it gives you gives you a base doesn't it it's a mm. place where you can just put all of your stuff and if the world does get inflationary and we're seeing airbnb prices going mm. crazy then why not stroll back to the uk and sit and talk to some ducks for a little while <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> have we piqued your interest are you thinking now you're going to head out <laughs> by yourself a narrow boat on the uk waterways well hold on hold on just one moment there because this is a series don't do anything until you've seen the other videos we're making about some unusual living options here in the uk and then after we've made those videos we're going to make another video comparing each of them together and telling you which one Sarah and I would consider doing for ourselves. And maybe next time we're in the UK, we might do it. That'd be worth watching, <laughs> wouldn't it? Well, we hope you've really enjoyed this video from here in Cheshire, England. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.